Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Luke 11 and 14. Very simple scripture. I want to show you how the demon spirits are behind many cases of ill health. The Bible says, and he was casting out a devil, the he being Jesus, and it was dumb, the victim. And it came to pass when the devil was gone out. What happened? The dumb spake and the people wondered. That means anything in your life that is not speaking, there is a spirit. When that spirit is cast out, that thing starts speaking. Whether it's your influence, whether it's your honor, whether it's your glory, the dumb speak. Now in scripture, you will see two expressions when it has to do with expelling demons. Number one is the word rebuked. Number two, the word cast out. It is, these are very usual expressions when it has to do with casting out demons rebuked or you know to cast out take note of that and then i told you notice that the spirits were identified based on the issues that they caused let's look at one more scripture for sake of time acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 i'm showing you the first level of deliverance casting out the demons the spirit influences verse 16 Acts 16 verse 16 it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying we were discussing this with our school of ministry students and we were laughing that not all profit is profit here is a relationship between a spirit of divination and profit she brought her masters profit and yet it was by the spirit of divination 17 the bible says and the same followed paul and us and cried saying these are men these men are the servants of the most high were they lying please talk to me were they lying which show us the way to salvation what is more accurate than what this girl said 18 the bible says this she did many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit not the girl the spirit i command thee in the name of jesus come out of her and he came out the same hour he came out the same hour note that manifestations when casting out demons is usual and biblical that means it does not mean there has to be manifestations when you cast out demon spirits but that even when it happens it is not unusual like you see all the time here it does not necessarily mean that the people are possessed now you know that there are different levels when you are ministering when you are casting out devils or ministering deliverance as we know both the unbeliever who is possessed and the spirit who is demonized they will manifest the same way and so you can mistake it to mean that they are possessed but christians cannot be possessed by demon spirits are we together now the second level of deliverance very quickly is what i call deliverance through transformation this is the level that is probably most neglected by many believers they do not know that this is a second level of deliverance please write deliverance through transformation and that by the word of god deliverance through transformation the second level of deliverance in mark chapter 5 the story of the madman in gadara mark chapter 5 we'll read verse 15 Please let's hurry up for sake of time. Mark chapter 5 and verse 15. Remember, before now, Jesus had 
casted that legion of the legion of devils out of the man and then you know the story got to town and people rushed and came here's what the bible says happened they came to jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion what did they see him do sitting and clothed in his right mind so in as much as the demon had been casted out you would think that's all but the man was sitting and listening to jesus and now his mind was becoming right the demon can leave but your mind can be wrong are we together now the second level of deliverance seeks to bring that transformation to your mind write this down please deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding please write that down deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding now that the spirit influence has been cast out in the name of jesus you need a reorientation to change your thinking and your perception because i taught you that strongholds are negative mindsets or belief systems that have been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim perpetually in that state deliverance through transformation seeks to bring a reorientation of your spiritual understanding write this down deliverance through transformation involves opening the believer to the nature and the character of god then the principles of the kingdom deliverance through transformation involves opening the believer up to the nature and the character of god and then the principles of the kingdom that means the second level is that the believer is opened up to understand the nature and to understand the character of God and then to also understand the principles of the kingdom if you're with me say amen. amen so number one a reorientation of your spiritual understanding opening you up to the nature and the character of God and then the principles of the kingdom write this down please transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons i'll take it again transformation closes the door of ignorance transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons how true transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons if a door is not open demons cannot come and ignorance is one of the doors or access points the assignment of transformation is that when the demon goes out then transformation now closes that door otherwise the demon will say i will return back to my house it can find it swept it can find it clean but still opened are we learning finally transformation tears down negative thought patterns transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons transformation tears down negative thought patterns or mindsets you may call them transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons <clears throat> listen listen carefully write this down and listen let me take you one more time transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons now please pay attention demons don't just find comfort arbitrarily they depend on the wrong mental construct of the victim to keep remaining comfortable in that victim are we together so what demon spirits do is that before they attack an individual they bring together wrong information 
that construct your mindset negatively and when they find that negative construction the demon spirits come and fortify that thought pattern so that you will not change from thinking that way now it becomes a free way for them because provided you have a negative thought pattern no matter how many times they cast out demons they will go with joy because they know the door is open you are not afraid of leaving your house because you have the key is that true have you had times where you left the key inside or for some reason you don't have the key and the door was locked now you get stranded and you get afraid demon spirit need not be afraid if they still have a firm control of your negative thought pattern please you have to learn this many believers rejoice in the fact that they've been free from demon spirits but these spirits easily and almost effortlessly return to the people why because they do not contend for transformation the moment they are delivered they say amen or demons are casted out they say amen they are happy and then they are flattered by the instant results they begin to receive and they no longer come to church they no longer open up themselves to the ministry of the teaching priest you see one of the blessings of coming to the house of god is that you are submitting your mindset are we together now the word of god attacks your mindset directly it begins to deconstruct the old and poor and negative thinking patterns that came from culture poor prior mentorship are we together inaccurate understanding of scripture because i told you the truth without balance can still destroy so when you submit yourself to doctrine among the many things it achieves is it begins to give you a superior enlightenment say amen, amen. i wrote down here let's look at let me let me give you two or three more scriptures proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 proverbs 4 and 23 thank you jesus it says keep or guard your heart with all diligence for out of it heart is interchanged for mind many times in scripture for out of it are the issues of life you have a responsibility to keep protect guard your mind guard your heart are we together romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says and do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind say the renewing of your mind most believers hate church and they don't know it's an attack believers like thanksgiving believers like celebration believers like anniversaries believers like gathering picnics and all of these things but the moment you say come to church to learn most believers see that i'm showing you how these spirits work as soon as the word of god is coming they manifest as slumber there is no reason to be tired you didn't come from you slept all day and you are still sleeping in the house of god even when a loud song of worship is raised you still don't wake up it's an attack are we together and then you find other expressions like distraction when your word is about to come your eyes just goes to your whatever it is your your phone whatever they are sending and it may not be something that is so necessary that you have to attend to and before you know it you are distracted and your word passes off you because you were not discerning falls on bad ground good seed but bad ground and it does not produce any result listen i want you to be very intentional about your mental transformation through the word of god the true secret for sustaining your deliverance in addition to casting out the spirit influence that one can happen in a moment transformation does not happen in a moment it takes one shout of the name of jesus to dislodge spirits no matter how age long but it will take a while quite a while 
because you have to deconstruct your understanding across several thoughts and then begin to remold it again that one is my assignment and by the grace of God, he's granted me the grace to be a wise master builder and will build with intention, provided you are willing to allow your mind to be built. Can I tell you, there are people who sit in church and they, it's almost as if they have vowed not to change. No matter the fire that comes from the altar, you will be surprised how it will fall on a mind that has refused to change. You must open up your heart to be disloyal to any thoughts that is inconsistent with the ways of God. Are we together? Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Please write that down. Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Renewal and transformation happens through knowledge. Write this down, please. All believers need the ministry of the teaching priest. The teaching priest here can refer to your pastor, the apostolic ministry, any ministry that is committed to the sound teaching of the word. May I, by this church, encourage those who are ministry here and co-laborers in the gospel, please let us focus on building believers rather than exciting them it's good to excite because the gospel is called good news but we must obtain grace to sit down and teach please look up can i tell you the way i will preach in a conference or in a convention might be slightly different from the way i will teach here in koinonia koinonia this is home i seek to build methodically and so i'm not in a rush are we together in a conference you are bound by time you may just have a day or two a session or two so you can squeeze in anything there but when you are teaching your people settle down where are you rushing to they are there with you don't be under unnecessary competition to bring rema teach doctrine 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 teach and repeat what you taught again and repeat it again it must not always be newness but let it be freshness don't teach once and assume the people have gotten it. This is the secret that fathers like Papa Hagen and Copeland, they keep teaching and teaching to a point where the entire congregation gradually comes into that body of knowledge. When you assess the average member, you see that they have a thorough understanding of certain doctrines. Maybe not everything, but in the area of grace, they know it thoroughly. The average believer in the Nigerian church, I submit to you, not all the case, but most of the case, you call random, pick an average believer and interview the believer along the lines of spiritual knowledge and you will live there with pain in your heart. What do you know about God? What do you know about Jesus? He saved me. What else? Nothing. What do you know about the house of God? Nothing. What do you know about prayer? Nothing. What do you know about the Holy Spirit? Nothing. What do you know about finances? Nothing. What do you know about advancement? Nothing. What do you know about kingdom come? Nothing. What have you then been learning? Listen, I, I, when I came into the city, I was, I was surprised at the amount people pay for school fees. Now, let me ask you, dear parents, when you send your child to a school and stretch yourself from pillar to post to cough out the school fees and pay and your child returns back with a clean uniform and you ask him a question young man what class are you and he says i'm in class whatever he is and then you ask him questions that relate to that class he gets zero based on your you are not the teacher and yet what you are asking he's not getting anything you ask questions at a lower level he still does not get anything what are you going to do to the teacher there's something called PTA. Is that true? Many of you will sit down there before it starts. You will sit in front and say, listen, I, I need to, un who is teaching this child? How can I pay this much and my child is not getting anything? Math, zero, English, zero, whatever, zero. But there are schools that when you take your child, in three weeks, you will see the difference. Has that happened to you? May that be your school in Jesus' name. Three weeks. Obedient, 
cautious, intelligent. He speaks with you like an adult. And you say, who taught you? My teacher. What is the person's name? We, 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 he, he will articulate the name of the teacher. You can see students sit down with teachers and discussing with the intelligence of adults. If they tell you they've added the school fees by 200,000, it may not be the best, but you are motivated by that result. Members will not, will not indefinitely drag themselves to a place where they don't grow. They will be tired and one day, anything will be an excuse. Rain, fuel, Nigeria, anything will be an excuse. Yes. The consolation, the consolation you have is that when you pay that price and get seated, you have done your own part. You allow the word of God to come. I vowed with God that I will never stand on this pulpit and waste your time, my dear people of God. I love Jesus and I love you too much to stand here and waste your time. Are we together? I cherish the sacrifice of your time traveling. There are people, did you know that there are people who don't live in Nigeria and travel every week? I've, I've found reasons to say, why don't you just come for miracle service? How do you leave another nation and come and sit down? And then I waste your time and share the grace. You go back with your challenges and there is nothing that is a token of the presence of God. Everybody say deliverance through transformation. Now, let me tell you this. When it has to do with deliverance through, through transformation, the man of God pioneers that process, but he's not the only one. Every parent has a responsibility to participate in this. Every young person has a, any, once you are in any kind of position of leadership, you owe it to contribute to the transformation of those within your sphere of influence. Are we together? As wonderful as my example about the school is, you cannot leave the school to do 100% of the work for your child. You also have a role to play. Transformation is powerful. And hear me, transformation is not only a church thing. It is an everyday thing. Open yourself to truth. Technology has given us an unfair advantage. We have today. Just with the flip of your phone, checking a few things you can have, videos and materials at will and just listen we have no excuse make up your mind that in the name of jesus you will contend for transformation let me tell you how to contend for transformation go and write a list of areas where you don't know anything about be very honest and sincere or that you do not know enough first corinthians 8 and verse 2 very powerful scripture let me show you something there if any man think that he knoweth anything, he said he knoweth nothing as he ought to know. That means you can know about faith, but not enough to give you the kind of victory you want. You can know about deliverance, but maybe at the peripheral level, there are still gaps in your understanding. You have a responsibility to continually upgrade until you gain mastery in the kingdom. If you're with me, say amen. In Acts chapter 2, last scripture and then we'll jump to point number 3. In Acts chapter 2, from verse 42, let's look at the, the nature of the early church and their contention for, for, they are contending for transformation. The Bible says, and they continued. Say continued. That's the key. That's the key. Starting is not the key. Continuing is the key. Did you hear what I said? Starting is not the key. Continuing is the key. The real power of transformation is in your consistent contact with information. Not just once. Not just once in a while. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. They continued this was what they did often, always, in fact. Continued. Doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayer. Doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, prayer. And they began to evolve into wonder-walking dimensions of themselves. 
show me a believer who has vowed to open up for transformation and i show you someone who will be a wonder in no distant time are we together we are victims of the things we know inaccurately or we do not know at all so we must trust god for grace to continue to allow the house of god to build our spiritual understanding methodically so until we become people of stature and maturity may that be our testimony in jesus name Amen. number three very quickly a quick recap three levels of deliverance number one casting out the spirit influences number two deliverance through transformation and that by the word of god are you ready for number three number three is called the discipline of conformity please write it down the discipline of conformity conformity is spelled c-o-n-f-o-r-m-i-t-y conformity another word for conformity is compliance with standards the discipline of complying with standards the discipline of adherence to scriptural instructions the discipline of having respect for the principles of god this is the last level of deliverance unfortunately most believers have not been taught that they have an active role to play in conforming to the terms that keep them in victory the discipline of conformity please underline the word discipline and underline the word conformity the discipline of conformity again what does conformity mean compliance with standards you conform to the degree to which you comply with standards adherence to scriptural instructions having respect for the principles of the kingdom is called conformity so you you need to be disciplined to adhere to the principles that guarantee your victory over demons and over whatever it is the powers of darkness now please look up to engage this discipline of conformity there are two things you need number one is called the enabling grace of god write it down you cannot conform by the strength of the flesh you need what we call the enabling grace i've taught you here that grace has dimensions is that true there is the saving grace but there is the enabling grace the grace that empowers you you do the doing but the strength is not from you enabling grace Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 popular scripture here's what it says I can do all things how many things all things through Christ which strengthened me I can do all things it is not by my strength I will do the doing but the strengthening comes from Christ so you need for you to be able to sustain the discipline to conform and adhere to the principles that keep you in victory you need the enabling grace of god number two you need your will the union between the enabling grace of god and your will is what empowers you to conform your will your will your will very important are we together Philippians chapter 3 let's look at verse 12 we'll read down to 16 very quickly not as though I had already attained either were already perfect he says but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus we're reading to 16 next verse now brethren he says I count myself to, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, that's an act of the will, and reaching forth unto the things that are before. Next verse, 14, I press. Say, I press. It's an act of the will. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling in Jesus. 
15 he says let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if anything ye be otherwise minded god shall reveal even this unto you the last verse he says nevertheless whereunto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule what rule pressing let us mind the same thing say i press let me tell you this there are many be believers who do not know that they have an active role to conform to take advantage of the enabling grace in union with your will for instance the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly is it in your bible nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful when you are aware of that being aware does not immune you you must now obtain grace to create systems that will bring you in compliance to that truth is somebody learning now yes the discipline of conformity may involve you having to separate yourself from negative relationships that you have had somebody is calling you all the time oh let's go to the club let's go to this and you find out that most of what is happening there is completely antichrist it is within your power to pay that price as a token of your determination to be free from the influence of demons the discipline of conformity if the spirit of poverty has been ravaging you and the channel through which it find it found access to your life is financial carelessness when you now learn the, the principles of the kingdom and you learn that frugality and management is one of the ways to increase you begin to create systems are you seeing now by yourself systems that tame financial carelessness from your life the discipline of conformity no matter how many gallons of oil or communion you take and swallow even if you you take one whole jar provided you don't open up yourself to be disciplined and to confirm to conform yourself to adherence to the principles of the kingdom i guarantee you satan will return this is why you see a lot of people angry with preachers as though they are the ones who are not powerful now you go back and check nothing has changed their lifestyles have not changed their speaking has not changed that there is no discipline around their life and yet they wonder why all the prophetic words don't happen this charge i give unto you timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given to you say discipline please shout it one more time Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do. Who does the doing? All his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. He says, all these blessings shall come upon you. Who is the you? Not the you that has had. The you that has disciplined yourself to walk in keeping with the terms. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Many people confess it, but it has never happened in their life. Do you know why? Because there is indiscipline. We do not conform to the terms. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of thy mouth thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do observe to do all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success can i tell you this i thank god for the grace of god that was given to me but look at my notes These are the notes that, that I use for preparing this sermon. You can see it was not typed, handwritten. Say discipline. Say conformity. My sitting down and burning the midnight candle is my participatory activity with the Holy Ghost to see to it that the prophecy for the deliverance and the emancipation of God's people happen. 
I can fold my arm and say, God, are you not the creator of the ends of the earth? And not study. I submit to you by God. You will be shocked at how many researches, how many materials. This is not a new subject to me. But I studied afresh again for one series. Say discipline. Please shout it. Say discipline. You see, many people, many people in church are not told this aspect. And we superstitiously believe that just because the victory has been won in Christ, it will just come automatically like that. No. When you pray for safety, you drive your car to where you need to go. You don't pray for safety and say, Lord, take me there and lie down. You get up, you dress an act of your will. You drive knowing that there is grace back in you, but you still drive. Lord, as I'm traveling for these eight hours, go with me. Amen. You believe, but for eight hours, it's not the hand of the Holy Ghost that will be on that steering. It's going to be your hand. Enduring, somebody who want to hit you, you will still, and it's you that will go there. The union between your diligence, your discipline, and the grace of God is what powers results. Please, are we learning? It was God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, who said, behind everything that works, there is somebody walking it. Any Christianity, he said, that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. I agree. I agree. The Holy Ghost can use you, can use your faculties to pray, but you must be alive and ready to engage with him. Are we learning now? So these are the three biblical levels of deliverance let's do a quick recap number one casting out the spirit influences never forget this the first level that is usually in most cases instantaneous just knowing what to do and engaging it with authority brings to end all of their onslaughts but the second step is deliverance through transformation and that will take a while. You have to sit with the word of God until it cultures your spiritual understanding again. And then number three, the grace, the union of the enabling grace together with your will to now walk in keeping with the truths there. Believe me, I tell you this by the authority of scripture. Anybody who walks by this, this tripartite approach to deliverance indeed will experience unquestionable liberty. most believers will only choose the first because it looks like the most charismatic and the most physical of the three and i do not downplay it i've told you that when spirits leave sometimes most times instantaneously you can begin to see results but don't be carried away by the result satan is a determined fellow we learned that from part one he left jesus for a season he goes back to re-strategize and returns back in hope that you will not do two and three hallelujah are you blessed now i have to teach you this please write it down how do you conform i've spoken about conform, uh, conforming and adhering but i have to structure it to teach you how do you conform when we talk about conformity we're talking of adherence what are the ways I need to teach you? Primarily, there are two channels for your conforming to the word of God and the ways of God. Number one, your words. Your words, your speakings. Your words. You conform by the discipline of speaking right. Because your words carry power. Proverbs 18, 20, 21. Proverbs 18, 20, 21. Very quickly. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips he shall be filled. Are you seeing it now? That your belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of your mouth and then with the increase of your lips you will be filled. Read 21. Popular scripture. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It says, they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You are ready to conform. You must begin to speak like a child of God. 
with the heart man believes unto righteousness with the mouth confession homologio repeats as god has said with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you must speak right believers speak carelessly we don't care we say all kinds of things we call death to our lives we call defeat to our lives we call failure to our lives and we say it does not matter say not before an angel i made a mistake number two the second way you conform is through your decisions this is a very major tool for conformity your decisions your choices and your decisions write this down please i learned this years ago from dr mike Murdock. decisions decide destiny decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny hallelujah it was jim ron of blessed memory who said no matter what changes around you if you do not change nothing will change the political party can change the economic tide can change your age can change every other thing can change but if you do not change you are the principal factor responsible for your growth if you change and everything remains the same you will still win if you remain the way you are and everything changes you will still have the same result under any condition if you are the same your result will be the same the most important component in your success is not what you do is who you become i've taught you here becoming is greater than doing you only do when you have become but the people that do know their god knowledge they shall be becoming they shall do most people focus on doing if the old mindset is what is doing something new you will still have the old result it has to take the new mindset to do something else are we together your decisions Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 very quickly Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 see I have said before you koinonia this day life and good death and evil reading to 2016 now in that I commanded in that I commanded thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live do you see it there and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it next verse 17 now give us 17 but if thine heart turn away so that thou will not hear but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them uh -huh. I denounce to you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whither thou passest over Jordan to go in and possess it now verse 19 I call on heaven and earth to record as witnesses this day that I have said before you koinonia life and death blessing and cursing therefore use your will choose life choose life by choosing your words choose life by making quality decisions that thou and thy seed may live are we together that thou mayest love the lord thy god that thou mayest obey his voice that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days thou mayest dwell that thou mayest dwell in the land that the lord swear unto your fathers to abraham and so on and so forth he said choose life write this down please as we wrap up this session so that we'll get quickly to the weapons of victory the quality of your choices and decisions the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems 
that means the kind of information that has saved your mindset the quality of your choices and decisions will always be a reflection of your belief systems so if your choices and your decisions are negative and demon attracting you need to review the information that shapes your understanding and your paradigm your perceptions and your beliefs then you can now make quality decisions that honor your now superior mindset most believers do not contend for transformation and so in as much as they make decisions they find out that most of their decisions are decisions that lead to defeat remember i have taught you here that you do not choose consequences you make decisions and the decisions themselves have attached to them already consequences hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.